What's up guys? Make sure you hit the subscribe button because I'll post weekly videos on creating passive income and that's what we all want, we want to be independent. So subscribe. What is up guys? Welcome back to session 2 of the how to sell on Amazon for beginner series. Last week we spoke about how you can find your winning product. I hope by now you all found your winning product. If you haven't done it yet, go back to the previous video. I'll show you there how you find your winning product. But now we found our product. How are we going to optimize it? Before I go into this session, uh, I want to let you guys know that I have a Facebook group, which you can join. Uh, it's still pretty empty, which is good for you because you will have private sessions with me with all the questions you have during your journey. So make sure to join it. As you know, Last week we talked about finding a winning product. This week we will talk about optimizing your product. And in the future we'll talk about finding a supplier, create an account and listing, create a shipping plan and selling your product on Amazon, which is the end goal. So let's start with session two. Session two, we want to optimize our product, but how do we do that? It's actually pretty easy because you will always have competitors who are already into the game. And if they are into the game, it's going to be easy for you to see what's wrong about the product, but also what's good about the product, because there are already people with reviews. So the first thing to do, uh, last week we found this bathtub caddy. I'm gonna continue using this example for the whole uh, uh, series. But what we can do is we can now uh, click on a competitor. So let's say this Royal Craft Wood Luxury Bamboo Bathtub Caddy. And what we can do is we see this guy has 320 customer reviews. We click on that and then what you want to do here don't click on the five star reviews. Why not? Because um, emotion plays a big part into people giving a review. Uh, someone can be like really mad at the company and will say, this is one star, this product is shit. But that might not be an honest review. It might be like three star, but he expected five star. So in my experience, if you go between two and four stars, those are the most honest reviews because people really considered not giving five or one star. So let's start for, for with like two stars to see uh, what's wrong about the product. You can then scroll down and you see people here. Uh, I ended returning the tray before I even used it. It looked nice, couldn't get past the horrible quality. All right, so what's wrong with the quality? He regrets his purchase. Uh, yeah, we can see it here. It, it, it's really easily broken. So what we know, know here now, and what you're gonna do is you gotta open an Excel and you have got to write down what's wrong with the product, which, all, which is shown in all the reviews. So here we say, Caddy breaks easily. So what it's going to say is when I talk to my supplier later, I have to make sure the product is durable. If we go down, product was broken up and taking it out of the box. Very disappointing. Someone found the color beautiful though. So color is beautiful. Beautiful. Dark. And someone else said it breaks easily too. So that's already two of them. Mm. I wanted to love it so much, I don't at all. I think the design must intend. Well, all right. Let's let's take a few, let's take a quick view at like the three stars because these are like the most honest. Solidly built, good quality issues stopping the side from sliding in and out. All right. So what we see here. 
Someone uh, placed a bathtub caddy on his bathtub and is scared it's sliding because it slides easy. So if you write down here, slides easy, make non-sliding. We now know we have to fix that in order to be unique uh, in comparison to the competitors. All right, everyone's saying the quality isn't that good. So that we know is like a big one. Um, it looks nice, broken up on arrival. Wrong color delivered, like the color. All right, so do this with many other. Wait, I can't type and talk. Do this with other uh, competitors as well. Here, let's let's do this one for a second. Go to the reviews. All right, let's go to two star. Arrive broken. It it just breaks easily. It breaks easily. It doesn't fit an iPad or is too small. Doesn't fit iPad, too small. All right, I'll be back with you guys in a second because this is just what I'm going to do and I'll fill in the form because I don't want this video to be too long. So I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. I filled in the form and what we saw is people are scared of dropping the tablet. People don't use it often. The wine glass holder is too small. This I had a lot. Uh, people had like bigger wine classes and they didn't fit the wine holder. Uh, same as uh, the slipping uh, issue we had earlier. A lot of people talked about that. So we really can improve this by like placing rubber on the uh, below side of the bathtub caddy. There's no clip down for books to hold it. A lot of people said it as well. The book fell in the water in that kind of situations. Old iPads didn't fit, it can't take water, so you have to keep it dry. All right, maybe there's some spray we could use on the caddy which makes it waterproof. Only wine glass, no normal glasses. So if people wanted to drink like uh, Coca-Cola, they couldn't put it in the wine holder because it only holds wine. Hold wine. I also wrote down some pros, people love the wine holder. Uh, some other competitors did had a, have a rubber, a bar strip to prevent sliding. The bamboo they love, they love the adjustable screen tablet holder. So some are adjustable, which is good. And there's room for more stuff. All right. So we now know what's wrong with the product. We now know what's good with the product. If we find a way to remove these bad situations, we will be unique considered to the competitors. So the next thing to do here is think of USP ideas. And what means USP? It means unique seller proposition. A unique seller proposition is actually what, why do people buy from you uh, when you're compared to competitors? So what we can think of here, and if we go back to the, to the caddy, let's go to the main... The main area all right so if you just look at the pictures at the competitors what do you see all right it's a lot of like regular wood it's like gray it's like lighter dark it's it's regular wood it's white look at this guy this guy is very unique because he's the only one being white and we have to figure out something that you're the only one doing that so that people who want that specific requirement they buy it from you so let's say here we want a dark uh, bamboo wood color which makes us unique what you can also think of is maybe you could add some uh, things to your product which make your product outstanding like this guy here He's giving a, a, a free bath pillow. I don't think it costs like very much money, but it really uh, makes you jump out in comparison with your competitors because here you only get the tray and here you get the, a, a bath pillow. So we got to think of something we could add with the product which makes us unique.
So fill that down here and once you've done that you now know uh, which are the good qualities which you must communicate in your marketing but we'll do that later. Uh, you, you know what you have to fix which makes you even better than competitors and then you can communicate this so people will buy you instead of others. You then also have like unique selling propositions which make you unique in front of the competitors. And the last thing here which is actually really important as well is the product that you are selling, are there any regulations or certificates? There, there might be some customers that like uh, some kind of insurance, like, oh, this guy uh, has a certificate and the competitor has not, so this must be good. So how do you figure out if there are any regulations or certificates with your product? It's very easy, you just go to Google, you type in regulations for bot, bot up caddy. Oh, you see there, I already did my pre work. But for bot up caddy, it, it might be like such a specific product that you cannot actually find something about it. But we know the bot up caddy is all made of wood. So if you type that here and also at US because we'll be selling in America, here you see some, some cert certificates and regulations you have for selling wood in America, for importing wood. Here, how to import wood products into the United States. If you then open that website, they will give you some examples of what you have to be looking for with links with it. So my advice to you, whatever it is you're selling, spend like 30 minutes trying to research if there are any regulations or certifications which also makes you more unique and which you can use in your marketing to make people buy from you. So make sure you do that because it's very important and then write them down here. And once you're done with that, you now have a full picture of what your product has to look like, which you can immediately send to the supplier. Okay, so now I'll just grab the main things. There's no clip down. Sometimes it slides. We need a wine glass holder, which is bigger, so it holds bigger glasses. We want the dark bamboo color. If you look at all these uh, characteristics, you can make... It easy for suppliers and what I do is I make uh, a, a picture an image so this is actually a PDF of what I want from the product you can see here I want a dark bamboo color that's one two I want rubber grips on the bottom three I want a big wine glass holder and I actually did some research on how big is the biggest wine glass and that's 11 centimeters so I want it to be 11 centimeters. I want logo branding as well. I want custom packaging. This is just an example I made quick. But you see the point. You can send this to the supplier, which makes it really easy for them to answer your request. Because you want to make sure that your supplier can deliver the product you want. Also make sure about how much pieces you're talking, like 500 pieces, 1000 or 2000, because when you contact suppliers, uh, the higher you buy from them, the cheaper your product is going to be. So if you have a lot of money, it's always better to uh, invest in more pieces, but it's always good to have like uh, a knowledge about the difference in price uh, when you compare it to pieces. So you can make this for yourself. You don't have to. I, I actually made this in Photoshop. You can also make this like in Word or in like PowerPoint. Do anything you know, but make it easier for the supplier. Because for starters, a lot of suppliers find English speaking hard. So images really work for them. Uh, the second is a lot of suppliers like just scan through your emails. And don't even read the words so images just work way better and faster so my recommendation please make an image of what you want from the product because it's going to make it easier for you then you saw i was talking about logo it's very important to create your own branding because your own branding makes you unique 
and people will want your specific brand and will remember it if someone has the product and shows it to it to a friend all you remember is the branding the logo so make sure you create a logo i actually made a real quick logo myself in uh, adobe illustrator uh, i actually know how that works but if you don't know anything about graphic design i have another method for you which can create your own logo which is called called fiverr and what what's fiverr fiverr is like a platform where a lot of people sell their certain skill so if i type in logo design you see a lot of people offering their skill i don't care about that offering their skill uh, which is in this case logo design and you can see for 33 bucks someone will do a minimalist logo design for 13 bucks someone will do pro logo design which looks it looks all right you know so you don't actually have to be able to make your own logo but my yeah my advice is just watch youtube videos on how to create your own logo because once you can do it it will bring you so much further in the future and also if you want to sell other products so yeah but if you want, don't want to do that, you want to be quick and this is just like a hobby and whatever, just try this because this is actually pretty cheap and you get good products, so go for it. So now, we know that we have to write a pro and cons list. We know we have to know our unique selling propositions. We know our certification and regulations. We have our uh, image created which shows the requirements we want from our supplier. We have logo and brand name. So also think of like a good name which stands out because you want to communicate this later with the supplier to give them a good feeling about who you are. That's basically it for this session. In the next session we're going to be finding a supplier which can be a real pain in the ass because uh, you're dealing with people in China and sometimes it can be hard but if you consider watching my next session you will find it maybe easier because I have some tips to make it easier for you and to find like the perfect quality slash price uh, combination so make sure you tune in next week thank you for watching this session and I will see you guys in the next video